A film cue is a piece of music or sound that's timed to begin and end at specific points during the film in order to enhance the dramatic narrative and the emotional impact of a given scene. Enter Ganondorf is the cue for when Link and Ganondorf meet face to face for the first time in Ocarina of Time. It's reminiscent of film scores from the 60s and 70s, sending up the trademark sound of composers like Bernard Herrmann, Jerry Goldsmith, and, of course, John Williams. The first time Link encounters Ganondorf in the flesh is a dramatic moment, and a guaranteed way to enhance a scene's tension is to write a cue rooted in the diminished scale. This is exactly what Koji Kondo does here. My goal for this video is to shed a little bit of light on why the diminished scale is such a ubiquitous device for evoking darkness, evil, and fear. The diminished scale is different from typical major or minor scales in that it's an octatonic scale. This means that it divides the octave evenly and leaves the same number of intervals on both the left and right sides. For that reason, there are really only two true permutations of the fully diminished scale. The whole half diminished scale, which is built by alternating whole notes and half notes, and the half whole diminished scale, which, you guessed it, is built by alternating half notes and whole notes. In addition to its use in film scores, the diminished scale is also a favorite of many jazz and blues musicians. It's a great way to spice up a solo, especially over dominant seven chords. So I understand that I still haven't answered the question of what exactly makes this scale so dark. Well, there are two main reasons that I can see. The first, the diminished scale is made entirely of stacked minor thirds. And the second, there's a tritone in every triad. Let's start with the stacking thirds thing. A diminished chord is built by stacking minor thirds on top of one another. If you add the neighbor tone below each of these minor thirds, you get a diminished scale. A C whole half diminished scale, to be exact. So what, you might say, minor scales have minor thirds and they don't sound nearly as unstable as diminished scales. Well, that's very true. What makes all the difference in the diminished scale is the diminished fifth, where the scale gets its name. As a general rule, the more sharps you have, the brighter the sound, and the more flats you have, the darker the sound. Since the diminished scale flattens two very strong chord tones that normally bring stability, the third and the fifth, it's decidedly darker than any minor scale. This brings me to the second point. Every triad built within the diminished scale, and I mean proper triads, the root, two diatonic pitches above that, and another two diatonic pitches above that, contains the tritone. It's a fair argument to say that it's truly impossible to resolve tension in the diminished scale. Everywhere you go, the tritone is waiting. Now, while this kind of film cue was classic in the golden age of film, it's admittedly become a cliche to the point of comedy. There may be something to this cheesiness, though. It's important to remember that the Zelda series is, for the most part, all ages. There's almost no blood. The violence is cartoony. The themes are enjoyable by both children and adults, kind of like Pixar movies. Creating something enjoyable for all ages is one of the most challenging feats in any artistic endeavor. It's possible Koji Kondo was playing up the cliché so as not to actually scare the children playing the game. If he had introduced the bad guy with, say, a more scary, atonal soundscape... It may not have fit the appropriate for all ages aesthetic Nintendo had spent years crafting. Anyway, without further ado, here's the cue I've composed using the principles outlined in this video. Number one, a diatonic bass line in a minor key. Number two, major seven flat five chords built off of each bass note. And number three, a melody that follows the seventh degree of the chords. <laughs> I 
I hope this video was helpful and or interesting. I appreciate all of your comments on the first video. Even the constructive criticisms I thrive off of, I use them to improve and I genuinely appreciate it. I also want to say a quick thanks to 8-Bit Music Theory, whom this series is indebted to for sure, for helping me identify some of the voices that my untrained ear cannot yet hear. Definitely check out his channel if you like this kind of stuff. If you like this video, please subscribe for more content like this. If you want, you can download my queue via the link in the description below. Thank you guys, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.